So how do you attract new business so you constantly don't have to chase it? Hi, I'm Mike Cuevas, the Real Estate Marketing Dude, and this podcast is all about building a strong personal brand people have come to know, like, trust, and most importantly, refer. But remember, it is not their job to remember what you do for a living, it's your job to remind them. Let's get started. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Marketing Dude Podcast. Holy shit, what the hell is going on? We got a lot to chat about today. And, um, you know, we're seeing it. I mean, I'm seeing it in every aspect. So lots of in the mortgage side. I know a lot of the mortgage brokers are hurting right now. Things have gone a lot slower. Uh, Not as bad as for real estate agents, but folks, this isn't that bad in general. If this is your first shift, well, welcome. Um, welcome to it. Take notes and learn a lot because the shifts are uh, sometimes a blessing in disguise. At least they are for the entrepreneurs and the business owners, because if you've been through one of these before, that's the ones who last and the ones who start doing things differently through a shift are the ones who actually start grabbing market share, uh, building their brands. And those are the ones who actually benefit the most. So if you're hiding beneath a rock right now because you're worried about expenses, well, you're doing exactly what we want you to do. Uh, keep sitting there. Don't come out of that rock. Stay in that closet. And we're going to be very, uh, we're, you might want to get out of the closet by the end of this conversation. But I wanted to bring on a very well-rounded guest that I coincidentally met last uh, week over in the wonderful city of Kansas City. I'm still trying to lose the 10 pounds I gained from the barbecue <laughs> I ate there <laughs> over that yeah. couple of days. Jesus. Uh, but he's pretty well-rounded, guys. Uh, he's broker Joner. Uh, his office is doing over 100 deals a month. He has a title company or a mortgage company. I mean, um, and he's could see everything. He's been here before. He's he understands the shift. And um, if you want to take notes on anything, you're going to take notes from this guy. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce our guest, Mr. Phil Duke. What's up, dude? Yeah, man, I'm excited about this. Um, certainly a hot topic uh, in, in my arena. And hopefully we can share some nuggets that will help some folks through this time because there's really nothing to be afraid about. So, yeah, I, I agree. Why don't you tell everyone where you're at? Um, who the hell are you? Give us a quick little brief rundown and I got all kinds of questions for you. Yeah. So Phil Duke Jr. I'm in Northport, Alabama. Most people don't know where that is, um, but it's West central Alabama. Um, Tuscaloosa, Alabama is on the other side of the river uh, from us here. That's where the university of Alabama is. We're a pretty good football team uh, for a couple of years now. Um, so we're here in a relatively small market and, um, you know, I was one of those people that got in the business, um, at a, at a time when the market was on fire back in 06, uh, everything was selling and then 07 and 08 happened. And unfortunately I didn't make it through that shift. And so I ended up joining the military and going back to school. And in 2015, I jumped back in the business as a part-time agent and I went from a part-time agent to a top producing agent, to a team leader, to, a broker owner to now having multiple locations, multiple states, and uh, a mortgage company and a title company. Um, and so, you know, a lot of things I learned along the way. Um, and, you know, I've been in one of these before and I didn't make it. So this is certainly uh, uh, something that I'm really looking forward to the challenge. And I know what I need to do this time because I, I didn't do it the right way the first go around. Yep. Well, I, I could guarantee you that your uh, military experience, discipline and all that has a lot to do with it today. Let's start at the very beginning. Um, let's tell everyone what you're not going to do right now. Let's start with yeah. that. Like, what are you not going to do right now? What I'm seeing is people are like pulling back. They're 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 scared. They're in they're not doing anything. And that's part of the pro- problem. I mean, yeah, I think uh, I think one thing I'm definitely not doing is I'm not buying into the hype that we're about to crash and everything's going to be over with. The reality of it is every single day there's buyers who are making offers on properties and the sellers are accepting them. And it's going to be that way no matter how good or how bad it ends up being. And so one thing that I learned um, you know, along the way is that the market's always going to be good for somebody. It's been really good for sellers the last couple of years hasn't really been very good for buyers, but it's either going to be good for sellers or buyers or renters or investors. And so, you know, more than ever, you've got to have a well-rounded approach. Is is it going to be bad for sellers? I mean, I don't think so. Um, If, uh, if you've owned a property for more than two or three years, you're probably sitting at a hundred grand or more in equity in your property right now. And several years ago, we used to go out on a listing appointment and just 
hoped that there was enough equity that they could pay us a commission to be able to sell that house. So if if unemployment does go up and people start moving to areas where cost of living is down and they need to sell, they've got equity in their houses right now that they didn't have in 08 and 09 and 2010. Um, you know, the same buyers that have been complaining about lack of inventory and bidding wars, they're now able to get in houses, yeah, at a higher interest rate, but there's not as much competition out there right now. And then for us, you know, really gearing up, going back into buying rental properties, um, you know, we really haven't tried going after an investors because it's been tough for investors out there. I think yep. we're going to have a lot of a lot of accidental investors that maybe pay top of market value in bidding wars, mm -hmm. and they're going to find themselves transferring to a new city to a new job. And even though they don't they don't want to be a landlord, they're going to need somebody to manage that rental property. So we're even gearing up to kind of shift that direction too. So, um, so we're going to pivot, and it's going to be good for somebody, and we're just going to adapt. And we're also going to market more. That's a big thing we've been talking with our agents about. If there's going to be less sales, doesn't it make more sense to market harder to get a piece of those lesser amount of sales? Yep. So, you know, those who market and have a clear message and who have a, a pipeline full of leads and appointments and people to follow up on are going to win. Might be more time in the office, uh, you know, prospecting and following up and less time out there on appointments. But if that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. It's crazy that like um a lot of this is a, it's a lot of it's like just shift in mindset but I've never realized why all the buyers like to buy when everyone's buying because that's usually the worst time to buy in hindsight but then uh, and that's just a quick easy shift you know that, that folks can have and do you have to know how to let's unpack a couple of the things he just he just mentioned and, and these are a couple of really um I think really good tips just to start unpack it because everyone's getting asked the same questions and they're at getting asked uh, this, Phil. Hey, well, I'm just going to hold off a little bit because um, like, holy shit, did you see the fucking news? Like you wouldn't you hold off right now? You know, you could easily reverse the uh, way you answer that question. And be like, well, that's exactly why some of the smartest people are actually buying right now. Like, it's weird that everyone wants to buy when everyone else is buying. But when no one buying, when no one's buying, that's actually a time you do want to buy because there's going to be a lot of motivated sellers. So I'm not saying you buy anything, but I'm saying you do buy the right deal. That's a different pitch. People are like, what? Hmm. Yeah. Or, you know, the th the thing that I would return uh, to that person with is how do you how do you determine if something is a good deal or not? Mm -hmm. You know, is it a good deal because it's been sitting on the market for 60 days and nobody's written an offer? Um, is it a good deal because 10 people wrote an offer within 24 hours? I mean, how do you determine what's really a good deal? And I would also encourage anybody who's in that buying you know, window, uh, whether they're an investor or just, you know, buying something personally. Don't you wish you would have bought five years ago at those prices? And I bet we're going to be saying the same thing five years from today is man, the, the, the economy is going to continue cranking out. I mean, um, you know, billions and billions of dollars of stimulus just, you know, going through through uh, through the house right now. It's going to be more and more inflation. Uh, prices are going to continue to go up on everything. So I'd rather get in on it now at today's prices with less competition than a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. Um, and then understanding also what to do with that money you've got, whether that's uh, you know, doing a cash out refi to to purchase uh, a second property and leverage that property to build wealth. I mean, there's just all kind of opportunities out there in the market right now if you know how to play the game. Uh, he also said a couple other things, guys. If you got that um, property management, yeah, there's gonna be some on accidental downloads, and yeah, and where you're at in the country is gonna be a little bit different. In our market, there's gonna be a lot of accidental um, landlords. If you bought in the last two years, you're already down twenty percent, thirteen percent. But that's normal for a very overinflated market. Uh, a bunch of rich people problems out here, right? Cry me a river, everybody. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I want you to hear what he said. Is that like it, it's it's true? It's like you got to adapt your services. He's talking about getting a property management company because if he doesn't do that, what's going to happen is he has a chance to lose touch with the seller of that property with an agent who does. And then who's going to get the listing when the time does come. Right. So you got to start fishing upstream for that. Um, back in the crash, short sales was our thing. Um, properties don't stop getting transferred. Um, however, the way people transfer them is what changes. And if you don't differentiate your message right now, you could miss out on that. Um, yeah. You said another thing that we have to unpack. I'm all for this uh, market more. Um, 
I've seen people that's used to spend a lot of money on lead generation, like teams, like some of these big teams, you see these teams that are just crushing it. Well, I'm like, dude, you're spending a hundred grand a month. You better fucking be crushing it on, on leads, on buying leads and opt-ins. Like if you're not fucking crushing it, you're spending a hundred grand a month. Like, dude, you should be crushing it. You know what I mean? And I'm yeah. like, what? I don't get it. But I've also seen those very teams when the shift happens because the ROIs change on those numbers, folks. You cannot calculate when there's a market shift like this. The one thing you can't calculate is what your lead generation was doing the month prior. And therefore, because those numbers are going to change just a little as blip in consumer sentiment will fuck that up. And you could be a month or two away from losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but you said market more and you're right. I think you, if anything, in a shift, I do pull back on lead generation stuff because I don't know what that market or, or those numbers are doing yet. I can't accurately take an ROI, but the one ROI that is always going to prove to be true is the one that comes from your past clients, friends, family, and aunts and uncles. Uh, market more, market more, get louder when everyone retreats. Uh, talk to me a, mo a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, so that's a big thing that we've been uh, talking with our agents. You know, uh, our our business model within our brokerage is we don't uh, spend money on leads for our agents. But what we do do is we help them um, put together a marketing strategy and they've got to do the work. So this is what it looks like in our company. Um, Tuesday mornings, every other Tuesday morning, we do a 6 a.m. OK, I didn't say that wrong. 6 a.m video chat where we're walking them through what content to create, how to post it uh, as a Facebook ad, how to retarget the same people over and over and over. And, you know, it only the truly committed show up for that. Um, I mean, it takes a little bit of extra effort for a real estate professional to get up that early in the morning, um, hop on a video chat, uh, and we just do it for 30 minutes. But they're out there on a weekly basis creating video content. And we're specifically targeting people in the local area, uh, where they work um, and to their sphere of influence. A lot of people don't know this, but you can take your phone, uh, your contacts list in your phone. You can download that into a spreadsheet and you can upload that spreadsheet in the Facebook ads manager and you can target to people who are already in your phone as contacts. So think about your, your sphere of influence, whether you got 300 people, 500 people, 1,000 people in your phone. And every time they log into Facebook, only those people are seeing your video content over and over and over. And we're not we're not preaching doom and gloom. We're not preaching, you know, uh date the rate, marry the house. I mean, we're 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 just gonna keep plugging forward. It's gonna keep being good for somebody. And we're just gonna keep that message out there. So so I think uh these are things again, you know, uh, it, it's been you know, I, I hate to to ever say it's a good thing when the market goes down a little bit, but I have seen a greater separation, even within my group of agents, between the ones that really want to make it through this and the ones who are just going to continue, uh, you know, struggling a little bit. It's really that the committed people have, have started rising to the top. Yeah. And a lot of them, their business is better right now than it was six months ago, yeah. um, you know, because they've just stayed committed to it. So I think those are just a couple ways that we're working on doing it. Um, you know, video CMAs, still our number one way of generating uh, listing appointments. We just create a really simple video, a little screen share video where we like pull up the tax records and, hey, Mike, uh, Phil here with First Class Real Estate. Looks like you bought your house for 150 back in 2018. And and I just want to show you the last three houses that sold in your neighborhood. And here's one for 240 and here's one for 250 and here's one for 260. Yeah. Um, and then, hey, you're probably not looking to sell right now, but just wanted you to know that you know, if you were to to need to sell right now, even with the way the market is, and it's not that what you're not as bad here as it is in other areas, your house would be worth somewhere between two forty and two sixty. So again, like we're not waiting on them to click a home evaluation landing page to ask for that report. We're just sending it to them whether they wanted it or not, and we 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 put that into a YouTube uh, like an unlisted video on YouTube. We we text that out to the husband and wife, whoever's you know, living in that house. And there we go every six months, you know, we're touching people in our sphere of influence just by letting them know what their house is worth. And in a down economy, you know, there's probably people right now that pay too much for a car as well. Uh, I have a lot of friends that pay too much for a camper. They never camped before in their life, but they bought a $40,000 camper they've used three times. They're going to need to pay some of that debt off. So they might not have planned on selling, but they've got a hundred grand in equity in their house right now. They can still sell that house and they can pay off that camper. So people are going to continue needing, you know, real estate. And I think it's just always going to win for somebody. We just got to continue trying to find those people who, who are seriously needing to buy or sell something and they'll always be there. So 
um, I just want you to help solve my stuff a little bit here. Um, so uh, why video though? Like why, why video? It doesn't work. I thought. Yeah. I mean, video is the game changer, you know, um, you, you, you can only be, I mean, even if you were going to come in on, on, uh, you know, today, today's a Monday, if you were to come in on Monday and crank, crank out, you know, uh, cold calls for eight hours, there's only so many people you can talk to in an eight hour period. And, and less and less people are even answering the phones anymore. I mean, all these robo calls and spam and all that kind of stuff. But you record one video a week and you put that in a $5 a day ad on Facebook and you've got video playing for you constantly. Um, YouTube, you know, the, the kind of an area where I'm spending more of my time on. People looking to relocate to your area want to know what it's like to live there. And Zillow can't tell them the best place to walk their dog or the best park or the best, uh, you know, I, I'm doing a video this week, the top five boat ramps in Tuscaloosa, people who, who have boats, they're looking, they have a lot of lakes and rivers around here. Uh, outdoor recreation is a big thing here. Zillow can't tell them that, but we can in video. And does it take some time to plan it out, script it out, edit it? Yes, it does. But that video can be creating leads for you and can be in front of people 24 7 365 so yep. i really can't think of a more valuable tool than that yeah you can do it with a facebook ad and it, it's okay to have your picture on there and and have a you know a picture of your business card or whatever but video just connects on so much of a deeper level and that's what people want to see when i'm uh when i'm looking up how to do something i'm youtubing it youtube is my number one go-to so you know we need to take those same uh same approaches to, uh, to to what we do in the real estate world. Agreed. And we'll take a 15 second commercial break here. Uh, you know, you could get your edit video scripted, edited and distributed at realestatemarketingdude.com. We will help you tell you what to say. We'll be in the room with you. And then we even help you distribute it. Whether you want to run ads, put it to your YouTube channel, whatever it is, you, it is, you don't need more leads. You need more dudes back to our regular message. <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> I love he said uh this is so funny. Like, please never say date the rate, right, marry the house, guys. Like, I'm gonna shoot someone if they say that again. Like, I can't yeah. stand that. I hate it. I hate it. Date the rate, right, marry the house. Dude, shoot the messenger. Don't copy yeah. that. Like, stop. I hate it. I was so annoying. So annoying yeah. when I saw that stuff. Um, most people didn't even know what that meant. Like consumers, by the way, only like the real estate industry knew what they meant. A lot of people didn't understand that. But uh, that yeah. thing went viral, and that's so funny you said that. Folks, create videos. It's more impactful. It's the most impactful way to communicate. 90% of communication is done through tonality and body language, which can only be done through video. That's why people don't get you out of your head. And if you farm them with video content, they'll start associating your name with whatever your name is associated with. Um, it's that simple. Farm your friends and family and Facebook friends. Um, what Talk to me about the mortgage side. Um, and, uh, what's going on there? Because we have a lot of lenders that uh, listen to the show as well. And, um, what should they be doing right now? Um, what, yeah. what do you, what do you, what are you guys doing? Well, to be honest with you, I mean, it's, it's, it's very similar. I mean, uh, that's a great thing about being in the industry I'm in is the same things we're doing. Our real estate company is it's exactly what we're doing for our mortgage business as well. You know, uh, mortgage professionals have been able to get away with just showing up at sales meetings, dropping off donuts, uh, commenting on Facebook, you know, how awesome that uh, new vehicle was that you bought or how pretty the view is at the beach when you're on vacation and, and you know, um, mortgage applications are down. And so, you know, what we're doing with our mortgage business, very similar on the real estate side of things is we are creating video funnels and we're generating our own buyers and not just depending on real estate agents to provide us with ready, willing and able, able buyer applicants. So um, has it slowed down? Yes, it has. Um, you know, but again, you know, uh, we, we can just sit around and wait and hope that yeah. it changes and and keep waiting on referrals to come in from agents or we can go out there and hunt our own business down. And when we get that business, uh, we get a good approval that comes through and, and we got an applicant that's ready to go. Well, now we can figure out which agent we want to send that person to and we can kind of pick and choose which which agents we want to work with. And we like working with agents that are doing the same kind of stuff we are. Um, I think our agents like working with mortgage lenders who are also out there generating their own leads as well, not just 
you know, waiting on a, a handout from one of the agents. You mean the mortgage so, vampires where they just take, 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 like, hey, got yeah. any leads for me? Hey, by the way, I got tickets for a Cubs game tonight in case you want to roll. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's honestly, I mean, to be honest, that's the main reason why I wanted to get in the mortgage business because I was like, as real estate professionals, we're the ones doing all the hard work. Now, now that I'm in it, you know, there is more that goes on behind the scenes, obviously. Sure. But if you can generate the leads, you can figure out the processing and the underwriting and the closing and the fun, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so, so same I just marketing, like, same marketing plan as a real estate agent. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's exactly the same marketing. You can literally do the same message. You know, our marketing doesn't have anything to do with rates. It doesn't have anything to do with what's going on in the economy. You know, uh, you know, we put out um, a, 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 a view magnet video. Um, you know, top five reasons to live in whatever town we want to do. And then just a couple tips um, that are going to help them throughout their mortgage process. And then, you know, um, you know, hey, click here to see which loan programs you you might qualify for. Really, really simple. It's just mind blowing to me that 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 so many in the mortgage business are just waiting on agents to just send them a referral um, and not going out and generate their own business. You know, they got, got hundreds of applicants that have applied, but they're not taking time to go through that database and see you know, who might be ready right now, who, who did end up buying, uh, retargeting that database. And so those are the kind of things that I think uh, are going to have to become a normal part of any mortgage lenders uh, arsenal. And yeah. we're lucky here that we know how to do it on the, on the real estate side of things. So we're just doing the exact same thing with our lending team. Um, right. In your market too. My guess is that, um, and I'm not saying anything about the South. All right. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about the South, but I think you're pretty technologically advanced for the South. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Um, it, it's, you know, we have, we have people in our area that, that, that request for us to come by and show them how to do things. Just, just setting up their CRM, just basic stuff like that, that you would think is just normal every day. People would just know how to do it if they're in the mortgage business or in the real estate business. Yep. Um, but yeah, we're, we're taking, you know, everybody else, you know, people around town, they're sp still spending $2,500 a month per billboard. I can't scale that. <laughs> you're, you're, and you're you spending know? five bucks a day on ads to get the same yeah. results. Yeah. Yeah. We're spending $140 in a month getting the same results as what's taking them, you know, five grand a month with two billboards yeah. that they can't even track and verify where those leads came from. So yeah. it is just kind of mind blowing to me. So I would just say, you know, to anybody that's listening to this, watching, watching this, you know, those who learn how to market, particularly digitally market, video marketing, you're going to win in this market. The, the, everybody else is going to get left behind. It's going to be extremely expensive for them to continue marketing the way they are. And so if you will commit to learning this digital marketing, this video marketing uh, way of doing business, number one, you're going to save money right away, but you're also going to get probably a better result than those who are spending far more and they're not going to be able to spend that much. And what happens when the billboards go away? Will they remember you six months from now if you're not on a billboard anymore? I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think we forget them. No, everyone but if we forgets. Got videos playing every week, you know, one, one video a week can change the game for you. Doesn't have to be, uh, you know, if you can do one video a day, that'd be great. That'd be something to work toward. But if you're kind of new at this, you're kind of looking for something to do one video a week in a Facebook campaign can really be a game changer for you. It's just a popularity contest. You guys like, let's not uh, overthink it too. It's like video. How do you do this? Blah, blah, blah. Don't, don't worry about the logistics. It's a popularity contest. Someone who does more content, more video than someone who doesn't, it's just got a lot more attention than they okay. do. And then a certain percentage of the people who give that person their attention, need your services. It's, this is all this is, um, but you have to remain top of mind. Um, what we're really talking about is brand. At the end of the day, um, your brand is only as large as the number of people that recall it or associate it with your line of work. Right. So no. um, consistently communicate through video. That's all. That's just one thing. But regardless of whether you're going to um, learn or on Facebook ads or do a video, whatever it is, you got to do something because everyone's holding back. This is the the time, the, the main um, at least for me, I need to get your opinion on this, but the main thing is that when you get a market like this and everyone, everyone pulls back. So then you just have that much more attention. Um, and you, I could tell you straight up, there's a lot of people pulling back. Um, and that means there's a lot of less people running ads. That means there's a lot less people doing videos. That means there's a lot less people making noise. And when you, um, you won't see it maybe instantly, but it'll come back to you within the next six months. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that's a lot of the risk. Think back at COVID. You remember the people in COVID 
Uh, one of the guys that was on uh, stage with us, I believe, he started in COVID, right? That's when he started yep. his TikToks and all that because he didn't know what else to do. Now, he could have he could have sat there and did nothing, but he took time because he had nothing else to do. Start shooting videos and noise. He's got like a million followers or some shit now on, yeah. on TikTok and he's crushing it. Yeah. You got to show yeah, up, I mean, man. Yeah, it, it it does not do you any good to sit there and do nothing. I mean, do something, you know, and right now it's pretty clear to almost everybody out there in the real estate industry right now, that video is where it's at. So we've all got these wonderful cameras uh, in our pockets. You know, I mean, this is, you know, nothing fancy. It's an iPhone 13, but the camera on this thing is far superior to, than, to anything we had five years ago. Um, so just you, you know, with a, with a selfie stick and, uh, you know, either a shotgun mic or a, uh, a wireless uh, clip on mic, you can make really, really good videos that people will be entertained by and you can become the local real estate celebrity, the local mayor of your town. And if you do that, you're going to win. And it's a pretty simple formula, but it does take some planning. It does take some commitment. And ultimately, you know, that is that's really the big thing that's going to decide who makes it and who doesn't in this market. The, the truly committed are going to adapt. They're going to figure out a way to do it. They're going to do the things they know they already need to be doing. Um, and they're just going to be committed to do it. And they're going to come out on the other side of this thing really, really in a good position. And then when the market does shift, they'll have all these huge follower base that already knows, likes them and trusts them because they built up this video viewer audience. And then life is going to be even better for them at that point, I believe. Yep. It's always in the audience. So you hit it right on the dot. Um, love it, man. You got any uh, final and or closing thoughts that you want to uh, give to everybody? And I'll just say, you know, it, the market's always going to be good for somebody. It's either going to be good for buyers or sellers or renters or investors. So real estate is going to continue to change hands. Um, you know, if somebody's property went up a hundred grand in value in the last two years, and even if it went down by twenty thousand dollars, they're still sitting at eighty thousand dollars equity. So, you know, don't buy into the uh, the the skies falling, um, you know, date the rate, marry the house. I mean, let's speak about what people actually care about. And if you do those kind of things and you focus on those things, you're going to win and let everybody else, you know, um, you know, complain about, you know, the economy and inflation and interest rates, and all those kind of things. Just keep your head down. Keep doing what you need to do. Um, I'm betting if you're listening to this, watching this you probably already have a good idea of what you need to be doing, what you've been needing to do, but maybe you hadn't didn't need to do it during the market uh, the way that it was the last two or three years. Just do the things you already know you need to do. If you do those things, you're probably going to be very successful. Yep. Love it, man. Just don't freeze, whatever you do. Just freeze. Remember, the closet agent is still the closet agent at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> so thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Real Estate Marketing Dude. Folks, script edit to your videos if you're really struggling with this well, not only we do it less expensive in your market but we'll do it bigger better and badder than anyone you probably hire locally because this is all i do i speak eat bleed uh video content creation for you so reach us on our website realestatemarketingdude.com and connect with us on our channels again thank you for listening thank you for downloading we appreciate each and every one of you and we'll see you guys on next week's uh podcast peace Thank you for watching another episode of the Real Estate Marketing Dude podcast. If you need help with video or finding out what your brand is, visit our website at www.realestatemarketingdude.com. We make branding and video content creation simple and do everything for you. So if you have any additional questions, visit the site, download the training, and then schedule time to speak with a dude and get you rolling in your local marketplace. Thanks for watching another episode of the podcast. We'll see you next time.